Okay. Hello, this is Paris Alford with the Daily Journal. I'm joined by Ben Craddock, and, and we want to talk to you a little bit about uh, a project that we are beginning that replaces the uh, the one man Ole Miss pod, which probably had a shelf life of about uh, six or seven months there, Ben, but uh, we did some good things with that uh, too. Look, Ben and I are beginning a new podcast starting Monday called Justify Your Existence. And uh, it will be an Ole Miss themed podcast. It's gonna run five days a week. It'll be available most mornings uh, through the platforms through which uh, the uh, one man Ole Miss pod is currently available. And those are iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, uh, and anything else John Luke McCord can come up with. And Ben and I will be sending it and resending it out through Twitter and Instagram as well. It's going to be all the topics relevant to Ole Miss. Sometimes guests like Bigfoot in the background there. Maybe we'll get Bigfoot to come on. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and it'll be available most days by mid-morning. So that's coming up beginning Monday. Justify your existence. Look for that through uh, social media and, and other uh, such channels. Ben, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, just grinding away. My, my computer crashed this morning. You know, and I texted you earlier about it and uh, lost uh, a lot of information I was working on with our, our budgets because our, our new year starts uh, in September. So it's been very difficult trying to get together budgets because uh, I don't know what the future holds. Nobody does. So it's been kind of difficult, but it's life. You just kind of roll with it. Yeah, yeah, the future, man. It's just really, you know, and I tell people all the time right now when they want to talk about, hey, is there going to be college football or not being college football? You know, I think uh, that we're going to have college football. I, we have all seen uh, the conferences come out and announce their plans. Uh, announce their commitment to play. But Ben, all that is right now, that's a commitment to start. You know, that's a commitment right. to start playing football. And, and once you get into the games and once you get into the routine, we don't know what will happen relative to the virus. And these conferences are preparing for stoppages of play, perhaps uh, postponements, cancellations. Uh, they don't know. Uh, they all have formed committees and have studied the virus, and they're going to make the best decisions possible. And, and quite frankly, when the players come back into these environments, they're going to be safer than they would be in other environments. You know, if they're just hanging out at Walmart a lot, you know, or if they're hanging out in big crowds. And as we as we hear from, uh, you know, the governor, Tate Reeves, in his daily briefing, and Thomas Dobbs, the state's uh, chief health officer, look, the big gatherings, man, they're, they're still an issue, and we, you, you want to uh, limit those as much as you can. And, and what I hear, Ben, and tell me what you hear, but when I, when I hear people talk about playing football right now uh, and staying protected from the virus, the biggest concern I hear expressed is when players leave the Manning Center or leave the team environment and go socialize, and go socialize in big groups, whether it's the square, you know, whether it's uh, somewhere else off campus, what are you hearing along those lines? Yeah, um, you know, from what I've seen and talking to some of the coaches and some of the kids, you know, they have to be they have to be smart about this. And and, I, and it's amazing how these kids have adapted. Even my own kids have adapted to things being different. You know, and and you know, with us, when things aren't when things are different in our lives, it kind of throws us like this whole thing's throwing me off. But I mean, you, you got to make the best of it to survive, uh, you know, in business or, you know, especially with sports, but I, you know, there, I don't really have an answer, beside, but the only thing I have, you know, cause it's, it's the unknown and I don't do well with the unknown. You know, I like things to kind of be in order, you know, when it comes to business. Um, but in life there is a lot, it's all unknown. And I feel like these kids are, are handling more, better than uh i thought they would you know they're, they're smarter like you know after they work out or go to practice they go home and i think it's the coaches and the administration you know they're doing a really good job relaying the message to the kids hey you know if you do go to a, a, a gathering or a large group you know you could miss two weeks you know so i, I think they're, they're everybody's taking it really serious like mississippi state usm old miss uh they have the plan they have in place to me is 
it doesn't get any better than what the, those three schools are doing right now. Because kids right. are going to get yeah. somebody's going to get sick. Somebody's yeah. going to somebody's going to get sick, and after they get sick, yeah. it's about how do you execute the plan you have in place. It's about identifying it quickly, contact tracing that we hear so much about, isolation, and and then you know getting these guys back on the field after an appropriate time. So I. You know, I think they have good plans, but you know, you know what they say about plans. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, the I, I hear, uh, you know, the old uh, army saying is uh, that you know the plan never survives first contact with the enemy. Look, talk yep. to me from a business. You, you brought this up uh, from a business perspective. There is so much unknown right now. Like you, I'm a planner. I like to know what I'm doing in the days ahead. How do you approach this with your businesses? Uh, are you I, like I know right now you're looking for uh, employees looking for help at, at some of the crystal restaurants. Um, do you expand staff right now? Do you begin different projects? Are you looking uh, at, uh, at starting a, a restaurant or a business somewhere else? I mean, what are all these plans like during COVID-19? You know, it's, it's made us, it's made us, um, the one thing I, I knew that, you know, talking with my dad and my brother, especially my brother, we had to we had to learn really fast. Okay, how do we how do we get on top of this? What are we you know? And, and you find out fast what you're doing wrong in business. And, and one thing we weren't doing well was communication. So we made that a priority. So it, basically, every day I, I, we have a, a Zoom with our staff, and we go through yesterday. We'll go through today. Uh, we go through the safety measures, you know, for uh, COVID. We go through you know your basic stuff uh, at each restaurant. Um, and so, and that starts with our supervisors who are over each each store. They have a, a design area, um, but it's you know communication has been our biggest thing. And you know, doing these budgets, I don't know what's going to happen in six months. No one does. Uh, but I, for me, I always plan for the worst and then work my way down. Like worst case scenario, then I'll work my way down through each you know each case. Um, and, and that's how I've, ha I've had to kind of look at it. I'm not a negative person, but I've had to kind of look at it negatively because, you know, everything we've seen um, uh, has been negative. So trying to stay positive has been a challenge, especially when uh, sales are dropping $40,000 at, at a particular location. But uh, it, 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 and I'll bring this up to you and, and who, everybody's listening. Recruitment as far as employees. You know, you mentioned that earlier about us trying to hold on or recruit staff. Well, it's not an issue just for us. It's an issue for everybody. Um, used to be, you know, I was taught you go out and you, and you recruit people. You know, you go out uh, and try to find employees. Well, things have changed. Uh, so we have figured out, you know, and I know every, a lot of other people have that social media, you know, you know with Daily Journal, the Facebook uh page uh, they have um and some other avenues we've gone to social media to recruit and you know by using daily journal and and everything they've done for everything y'all done for us with our promotion and then our, and then our own facebook page at what a combo uh and then blue sky which is my brother we th that is where we've got 95 percent of our empl new employees since all this has happened people don't walk in a store anymore and, and ask hey are y'all hiring uh, so that's, that's been challenging because my staff, they're used to the old way. And so we, that's been a challenge because they don't, you know, some uh, older, uh, folks that work for me, they don't really know how to do all the Facebook stuff. So, you know, I, I love social media. I love, I think it's a, it's a great platform when you use it the right way. And so we've had to adapt that and really stay on top of it. And, um, you know, the post y'all, you know, we did with y'all uh, with the Daily Journal the other day, I got 22 people. You know, 22 people uh, contacted us and we hire, end up hiring 19 for Oxford. So, you know, you got you got you to gotta learn, you got to adapt, you, you got to do things outside your comfort zone because if you try to stay inside your comfort zone, you'll end up shutting your door. You won't make it. And I, anyway, but that's, I see college football doing the same thing. They're adapting. Yeah, yeah, they're adapting, and they're adapting in different ways. You know, we see the Power Five conferences, and it looks like they, they're going to all follow suit pretty similar in terms of playing really only among themselves, conference only 
competition. And that's going to be interesting. A lot of fans have wanted to see more games like that for many years. Maybe COVID will let us play and, and we'll see what a conference only season looks like. But, you know, the smaller conferences, and, and it's interesting right now to watch the response of Conference USA and the Sun Belt Conference, which, um, you know, it looks like both of them are going the route of, you know, playing eight conference games, but then giving their members the opportunity to schedule as many games as they can, you know, to try to get up to 12 games. Um, you know, and, and in Conference USA, you know, teams that might not have been scheduled to play each other this year might make up one of those extra four games and it'd be considered mm -hmm. a non-conference game. Interesting times right now. You know, Mississippi State and Ole Miss as SEC members won't play until September 26. We don't know what the schedule is, but that's when all of the SEC will start. But uh, the first game in Mississippi uh, right now will be September the 5th when Southern Miss is at home against South Alabama in Hattiesburg. So just very uh, interesting times. And I know right now Southern Miss is really trying to play 12 games. So, but, look, man, yeah. uh, let's, let's talk about uh, football a little bit. Ben, what have you seen? I know you've watched a little Ole Miss practice so far. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've been out a couple times, and, you know, Kiffin has them going. You know, it, it's a different feel. The kids are excited. I think the kids are just excited to get back out there. You know, I think that's the biggest thing, just to, to get back to some type of normalcy. And they're, you know, they, it, they're excited. Uh, the tempo is a lot different than when, you know, look, you know, every time you have a new head coach, there's, there's just different things you see, good or bad. And uh, with this new staff, there's a lot of energy. Um, you know, very personable guys. Uh, you know, I've seen well, – I've watched the quarterbacks, and they all look great to me. I mean, really, they do. You know, everybody's throwing the ball a ton. I mean, from Corral to John Rice to Dent to Tinsdale. And then the new kid they got in, I mean, they – the balls look better. You know, coming out, the release. Um, they changed some things up with, I think, all the quarterbacks on, on some of them. Not really their motion, but just the way they uh, view the pocket as far as the pocket presence. Um, I was just kind of hearing some uh, – our OC talk to our quarterbacks, and the terminology is different, but they're really getting coached. And I just think, you know, we're going to be in a – I just – I'm ready for football, but I think we're going to be in a better position. I think we're going to some, surprise some people because Kiffin, you know, he, he's a, he is – he is a nerd, and I say that in a good way. Um, he is a nerd when it comes to like football. He's a genius, just like uh, Leach. They're 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 built the same way. You know, they're college football coaches. They're not, you know, I'm gonna go play golf with all these boosters and donors and hobnob. They're not like that. They they they're here to coach football, and I and I respect that. I really do. And so, um, you know, the field's different. Parish. We need to go out there sometime and just kind of watch it and 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 really see uh, they, they're bouncing around. The kids are having fun. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new, you know, new staff, uh, new chance for – or new second chances for a lot of these kids, new opportunities. So, you know, I'm just ready to watch some football. And I'm pro I'll probably end up going to watch the USM game just to watch, see yeah. if I can get in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the quarterback competition is going to be very interesting, Ben, uh, because – the style is so different. I think you got to give Rich Rodriguez credit last year for doing his thing. I mean, when you hired him, you knew he was going to be a run first guy. He came in and that was one of the top running teams in the nation last year. In spite of that start the first week at Memphis, when I thought, man, this, this isn't going to work. Okay. He did his thing last year, but his thing was not the passing game. And because of that, I, I think, you know, when you're trying to become a running team, how much are you practicing the passing game in practice week to week? Mm. So you got all of these quarterbacks that need development in that area. You've got uh, you know, a very talented group of receivers that were underutilized last year. You know, and really you look at the numbers and you know, the only production from the receiver standpoint came from Elijah Moore. Now, I, I just think there's, there's talent at those skill positions that like missed a year, you know, because mm -hmm. of the system that Ole Miss was running last year. And you talk about the different things that this staff is doing. You know, I just think uh, development for all those guys is so important in the weeks ahead. Yeah, 
and they, you know, they all need it. You know, they're all, they're all young. They need the development. Um, you know, the kids, you know, that, you know, it's like John Rice. It's kind of interesting because, you know, when, when Matt got hurt last year, the actual play that they called for, um, that Rich Rod called after Matt went down was a running play. So uh, Tisdale was supposed to be going in, but, you know, uh, John Rice, you know, could, could run. So John Rice, they put John Rice in, and he gained, what, 40, 50 yards on the first carry, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, okay, let's do it again. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like one of those yeah. things where, you know, a kid got an opportunity, and, and, and you know, he showed how dynamic he is, and then it's, it's good and bad because you're, you're like, all right, well, healed up, so I'm going to put Matt back in. But John Rice is – there's a lot of momentum going. And I, and I think the way they handle that, I think they could have done – you know, I'm, this is just me as a fan. Yeah. Uh, you know, sitting back going, well, they should, you know, but that was kind of handled kind of, kind of weird to me in a weird way because there's ways to get the kids on the field. Um, and you got to get your talented kids on the field to win games. But, um, but I think that's a good thing to have, to have, you know, three or four quarterbacks that can compete and that can run your system. That's a great thing to have, you know. Yeah. So, but anyway, I, yeah, I'm, I look forward to it. I mean, all those kids, you know, they're so competitive in the quarterback position, and um, you know, it, it, it's it's making it's making them pull together is is one. I felt like last year they, they it was kind of some they were they were divided, you know, just kind of reading body language, you know. But I, I saw a post of the other day where Corral and Plumley and Dent and Tinsdale and uh, the other kid we just signed they were they all went out on on, on the boat and went skiing. And, uh, like, to me, that's what it's about right there. You know, building that bond is, is a unit. And I think it's just going to make us stronger as a team. Uh, relationships are, are so mm -hmm. important. And, and, and even more so, uh, you know, during all of this uh, unknown that we're you know, talking about. And uh, I think there's talent at the quarterback position. These, these aren't just, uh, you know, a bunch of stiffs. I think it's going to look different, but uh, there's talent there. And another important thing is right now they have a very good uh, collection of running backs to lean on while these quarterbacks kind of find their way. I, I really like uh, uh, the running backs uh, at Ole Miss. Folks, we thank you for being a part this morning. And I just want to remind you that uh, Justify Your Existence begins Monday. The new podcast, Ben and Me, five days a week, uh, it will up. Uh, Hope to have that turned around and to you by mid to late mornings most days, but uh, it'll be out there. iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and, and just uh, anything else we can think of. And we'll be circulating that uh, through our Twitter and Instagram accounts as well. Guys, thanks for being with us. Hey, Ben. Okay, I've turned on. Let's see.